Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Ah, there you go. Children of all ages, welcome to the Game Dojo and 24K Films. Movies, reviews, and TV shows. I'm your host, the Game Ninja. This is the Game Dojo. Ladies and gentlemen, from the heart of Gamer Nation, let's get into another great movie. So, ladies and gentlemen, over the weekend, the Memorial Day weekend, we had a chance to get a host of different things to watch and sit down and enjoy. And finally, I was able to get and watch the Civil War movie, 2024. I was looking forward to this one for a while. Um, I hadn't made up my mind about it. Uh, A24 films is, they're amazing. Like, I don't think too many of their projects I've ever watched that I really didn't like. Um, <clears throat> they're, they're very visually stunning. Cinematography is amazing. Beautifully, graphically designed. Uh, sometimes the stories may have glaring uh, issues here, there, and yonder, but that's okay. It is what it is. I, I do believe one of the, the recent ones I've watched, uh, uh, Pearl, <sighs> Mia Goth. Love her. That movie disturbed me in ways that I did not know I could be disturbed. Truly, it makes me look at certain women a different way. And let's not talk about X. Yeah, not going to get into the X one either. But let's just say... Pretty girls can be killers too, guys. It's a great world. It's a very equal world. And pretty women, pretty cute women with smiles and lovely faces and cute batting eyes and eyelashes. Yeah, they can be pretty dangerous and vicious too, sir. Yeah, never judge a book by its cover. M Mia Goth, without a doubt, became one of my favorite actresses overnight. Yeah, it's pretty disturbing in X, but in Pearl, she was just outright... Uh, whoa. Yeah, makes your hair stand up on end. You know how like your butt just clenches and the hair stands up on the back of your neck and you get that cold shiver and your nipples is hard? Yeah, that kind of creepiness. But that's not here nor there. We're talking about Civil War. So ladies and gentlemen, I didn't know what I was going into. I mean, I'd seen a few things about it, heard voices and certain chatters about it. Uh, Jeremy Johns, I watched his review on it, and I watched a bunch of people's review on it. But just watching people's review does not necessarily make me have my own review of it, because I'm going to watch it and make my own review. So, though I watch other people's reviews, I take them, uh, not with a grain of salt, but I listen to them and digest them, and then whether or not I agree with their viewpoints, you find out right here on 24K Movies and Reviews. So I want you to sit back, relax, with your favorite bag of snacks, we're going to watch the trailer and then jump right in and we'll unpack the movie for you, ladies and gentlemen. All right? Let's go do that right now. The United States Army ramps up activity. The White House issued warnings to the Western forces as well as the Florida Alliance. The three-term president assures the uprising will be dealt with swiftly. Let me know if you want to try anything. I'm just aware there's like a pretty huge civil war going on all across America. We just try to stay out with what we see on the news. Seems like it's for the best. Citizens of America, the so-called Western forces of Texas and California have suffered a very great defeat at the hands of the United States military. Mr. President, do you regret the use of airstrikes against American citizens? We're moving to D.C. today. You need to go down there. They shoot journalists on sight in the Capitol. Every instinct in me says this is death. What if? Every time I survived the war zone, I thought I was sending a warning home. Don't do this. But here we are. There's some kind of misunderstanding here. What? We're well, American, okay? Okay. What kind of American are you? You know? <laughs> the Western forces will reach the White House on July 4th. Oh my God. Get in the car! Get in the car! Move, move, move! We're gonna hang back. I'm not hanging back. One nation under God. Indivisible. 
watch this for oh. Oh, 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 oh. God bless America. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are talking about Civil War. And in light of all the things going on in our world today, uh, this hits closer to home and closer to the truth than more people would like to uh, ration. Including the whole thing about Texas trying to be its own independent, sovereign country against the United States. Um, this movie came out at the right time with all the things that are happening in the world. So let's just unpack it for you from the 24K film perspective. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Which one y'all want? The good? I want the bad? I want the ugly? The beautiful? Let's do the bad, get it out of the way. That way we can move on to good things. So the bad. Okay, I have some bad things about this, which kind of kind of unseats me a little bit from this movie, which is uh, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. I can't say it any simple than that. Stupid reactions and stupid things people do in situations where your life depends on it. Look, it's not lost on me. People will do stupid things in situations of levity and times of pain and things like this. I get it. But there's also common sense. And somebody has to have common sense. There are a few scenes in this movie that really make no sense to me when it comes from a point of what the fuck are you doing? The world is at war. Your country, you could die in a second in any moment from either side depending on who you roll up on and how you're dressed and who you come across as. I don't give a damn if you're wearing a press badge, which is one of the scenes that we come across in this movie, which didn't have to be if there weren't stupid reactions from people. Um, spoiler review. If you don't want spoilers, I'll give you a chance to turn out right now. I'll give you five... Four, three, two, one, zero. Thanos snap. Okay. The scenes in particular that took me out of this movie that I'm talking about is they're riding through a part of the country that is war written and people are dying every day, every second. People are being hung up and tortured and beat and it is a total state where you should be on guard. Every moment you're out and about, you should be on guard. I don't give a damn who you are. You should be on guard. And their friends pull up next to them in a car and they're swerving back and forth and riding. This is in the midst of murder, mayhem, and trauma they went through. And he decides, yeah, I'm going to jump into your car because we're having fun, you know. And he jumps into the car and then the other main actress jumps out of the car into that car with somebody she doesn't know, never met him before because she wants to do it. It, it didn't make sense. It was stupid. It was dumb. And it, you could say it's a kid being a kid and they just want to have fun. How do you have fun in a time where everybody around you is fucking dying? Literally. Every corner you roll up on is either somebody with a rifle or a gun, which means either your life and your heart is taken. You have bullets in your windshield. You've come through war zone, through war zone, through war zone. It's not a time to play, and it's not a game. You're playing with your life. And unfortunately, that stupid mistake cost two people their lives. And I'm angry that the young girl was allowed to live and go on in the aspect of the movie, the movie wanted her to live and go on because she got people killed for her stupid games and she won stupid prizes. I'll say it. You ain't got to. I will. So this movie pits America against Americans in a civil war aspect for power, freedom, and the narrative of this country. And it hits harder to home more than people would like to believe because every place on the face of this planet right now is so pressed to a point of fine precipice that everything is on a razor blade hair of teetering into the brink of war, 
the brink of disaster and the brink of total annihilation in even America. And that's the reason why watching this movie kind of intrigued me. It was basically a zombie apocalypse without zombies. And the enemies are basically your neighbor down the street, the person across from you, the government, that police officer that drives by you, uh, your servicemen. It pitted Americans against Americans to survive. And it was narrative driven, narrative ranged, and narrative brand. And that's a little bit too close for comfort, but enough to enjoy and watch it because a lot of people be like, wow, I mean, could you imagine if that happened? I'm like, you have no close idea of how close we are to that actually happening. Like, people, well, I don't think that could actually happen. Yeah, you have no idea how close something like that could actually happen. And you ain't going to read it in the newspapers. You ain't going to get it on the local telly. And you ain't going to give it across your, your, your CB band radio. It would just happen. And when the shit goes down, you better be ready. And it's not like nobody told you to be ready. Homeland gives you preparedness. All these different other places give you all these little bug out bags and food and preparation. There's doomsday preppers on every corner and every video of the net and on YouTube and on stations. So it's not like you haven't been prepared. People know these things can happen and will happen and have before and will again. I mean, unfortunately, those who cannot correct those mistakes are doomed to repeat them over and over again. It's just the way it happens. So Civil War, <clears throat> A24 gives you a unique perspective of reporters as you're taken through this war zone and you're left to draw your own narrative on which side you fall on. Both sides have pros, both sides have cons, and both sides have effed up narratives. So it really depends on which side you fall on. Um, it's beautifully shot graphically amazing and they take you through a bunch of different things that probably the average human never dreamed could happen the trauma of war and violence coming to your doorstep and that's a very real and painful thing to watch on film and they they capture the trauma <clears throat> the pain <clears throat> sorry my throat piece <laughs> Get some water. Cap off. They capture that very well. Very, 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 very well. Um, <clears throat> oh, my boy from... Um, I was wondering why he looked so familiar when I was watching the movie. And then I was just like, is that Pablo Escobar off of uh, Narcos? Yes, that's Escobar from... Pablo Escobar from, from Narcos. Because <clears throat> I was watching, I was like, didn't he die? And then I was like, where have I seen that guy? And I was like, oh, that's, that's Escobar from Narcos. Oh, it's nice to see he's doing other endeavors out here still working. But it's weird because I can only see him as Escobar. But there are some tragic moments um, <clears throat> Excuse me, during their journey that A24 illustrates very well. Um... The trauma of the human experience over violence, both guns, anger, hate, wretched persecution, they capture it very well. And the movie allows the action to go the way the action needs to go. Unfortunately, there are people who die who don't need to die in this movie, but I understand why they did it. They did it to progress the storyline and narrative that this has to be passed on to the next generation and then they have to pick up their cameras and their ideals and then they have to step and walk into the war just like we did. Um, actors and actresses in this movie were chosen very well. I do like who they choose for every single last role of this movie. Um, the good is this movie is brilliant in the way it pulls off its execution. Like, I, I can't, I can't say too much about that. There's just certain scenes where the camera, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, when, um, Pablo Escobar's 
best friends are murdered in front of him. He stands in front of tanks as they're riding by and he's screaming. You can't hear his screaming over the sound of the tanks in the background. And that gives you an example of how loud the violence and the the disturbance is that his sounds of the wailing are drowned out by the sounds of the war machines. And that is a that is a very painful aspect of war. Um I've heard a few uh, friends of mine who were veterans speak of war cries and how they were drowned out by the sounds of explosions and war machines and to the point where it just becomes deafening and numb, where you can't hear certain things and you're numb to certain things. And it's like a switch is flipped and you don't have feelings. The trauma is illustrated through what happens to this group of press agents as they travel to Washington, D.C. It's stated in the beginning in the hotel <clears throat> as they're loading up the car who's going to make it and who's not. And I didn't know it was a literal foreshadowing. I thought it was just something they were saying and talking about, but it literally comes to fruition. So they basically give you the end of the movie right there in that conversation, which is brilliant. Because who would think that they would tell you what the rest of the movie is going to be like and what's going to happen? But they did. It's, it's insane. But it's brilliant at the same time. Um, when the movie comes to a close at the end, that we're left with an abrupt ending, which I, I get it. They want you to feel unsettled. They want you to feel like nothing was really resolved and what comes next. Like you wanted that disturbing feeling. But I feel as though they could have given us at least another 15 to 20 minutes to show us what happens to the narrative now that they killed off the uh, the chief executor office officer. I don't know how I can say this without not getting in trouble. Uh, the man in power, the top man. You know, he gets a uh, he gets one in his computer. But after that, and the Western Front takes over. So what happens now? We don't know. What happens next? We don't know. Um, I don't think they're hoping for a sequel, but they may. We live in a time of sequelitis and things happen. But if A24 is involved, I would watch it. Um, the film, like I said, it has way more ups than it does downs. Uh, the stupid reactions and actions are what take me out of the film a lot. And that's one of my biggest pet peeves here at 24K Films and Movies Reviews, is I hate stupid reactions. I hate things when people, people like, you're sitting there and you're just like, who the hell would do that? I would never do that. Human beings wouldn't do that. Why are you doing this? The movie got a movie, yo. When it comes down to it, the movie's got a movie, yo. You either deal with it and chew it up or you stop watching the movie. I dealt with it and chewed it up. I saw the movie through the end and... It was a an experience. It was an experience. Um, <clears throat> have I seen better? Yes. In forms of war, narrative, and intrigue, and trauma? Yes, I have. I've seen movies where at the end of the movie I just felt numb. And I don't know if that's what they were going for with their ending on this one. Ending it so abruptly? Probably. <clears throat> I've seen lesser movies. Way I've seen lesser movies. So... Let's take Copper off the table because I've seen lesser movies. Um, it's definitely not going to be Platinum because I've seen better movies. I've um, I've been a witness to better stories that left me feeling disturbed and numb inside to the point where you feel like the character that went through the experience, you be, it becomes a shared trauma and you feel just as broken by the end. So I can't give it a platinum. I will give it a gold. I'll give it a gold because uh, A24 has a way of shooting and cinematography that captures the brilliance and beautifulness of everything around it. Even if it's a shot of somebody walking by and clouds are in the background and the sun is shining. They have a way of shooting it so artistically beautiful that it's just it's wonderful to look at. It's, it's beautiful. It's a feast for the eyes. <clears throat> and of course, two bad scenes 
that are stupid in this movie shouldn't change my whole narrative of the movie, which it does not. Does not at all. I hate those scenes, but it does not. Does not. <clears throat> not to mention, you get to a point in this movie where if somebody's asking you a question at gunpoint, what type of American are you? I think it's okay to lie. It's not a lie if you believe it. He just blew away your friend for telling the truth. I think it's time to lie if you want to walk away from this one. But once again, in that scene, there was a voice of reason who told them, don't go down there. They're not right. They have bodies on a truck. I don't see this ending right. We're going to go down and talk to them. <clears throat> I don't think that's a great idea. I think we should figure out another way. Oh, we're just going to go down and talk to them. You went down and talked to them. Pow, pow. Now two of your peoples is gone. They up out of here because you wanted to go down and talk. Certain people can be talked to. Certain people have to be taken out. I mean, you could have said you were from Kentucky or something. Yeah, like I said, those two those two stupid scenes kind of irked me. They irked me a lot. But I know there are people. And at the end of the and at the end of the day, they're they're at fault for them being unalive. True. And there are people who would do something so inherently, monumentally narrow-minded as of thinking I can go and talk to somebody who has a rifle and they're dumping bodies into a creek. Some people you don't approach. If you can't use your brain meats and think about that, then you get, you deserve what comes next. You don't walk up to that. But then again, one of them wouldn't be there if they didn't jump into a car with somebody they didn't know. For all you know, he could skin bodies and put them, hang them up in his closet. Why are you jumping to his car? You don't know him. Do you get that? People are dying everywhere around you. And you jump into a car that seems like it's fun while it's riding on the roadway because you want to have fun and you young. You don't know this person from Adam. See? Play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. And she won the stupid prize. And it makes me angry because you would expect her to learn from her stupidity. But the end of the movie, her stupidity gets someone else killed. And you're like... And as much as I want to hate her in that moment, I hate the other character. See, I'm, I'm kind of still keeping it vague. So you guys don't know. I'm starting to keeping it vague. But the other character in that moment, let me just say something. If somebody is in a line of fire, you don't push them out of the way and stand over them and yell at them. You tackle them, fall to the floor, out of the line of sight, and then yell at them. You don't push said person out of the way, so you're standing in the path, and then yell at them. Your back is to the line of fire. You push them out of the way because you know they're going to get shot. Now you stand there? What? You stand over them? In the line of fire. To yell at them. You know they're in the line of fire. Because you push them out of the way to save them. But instead of pushing them out of the way and falling with them to keep both of you safe, you stand up in front of them and yell at them. And then that person, while they're over you yelling, decides to take a picture of you as you get in cacao, cow, 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 ah, ah. <sighs> no. Like I said, it's a few scenes that take me out of this movie. But other than that, it's a golden great movie. Action-packed. It's narrative-driven. It's something you need to see if you want to have a broadened horizon of what's going on and what could go on. And just if the situation would arise, what could happen in your own backyard. And just like it would really be there are some towns who don't pay attention they don't want any they don't want anything to do with it and they go on as if life never changed and they live their old sweet times with their dress shops and their sugar margaritas and everything else 
And then there are other people who are literally barricaded in their house, worried about where their next meal is going to come from, whether or not somebody's going to come in their house and kill them. It's, it's a feast for the senses. And it's something that needs to be observed. Um, I can't say I enjoyed it because it's not something you want to enjoy watching. But I can say I did digest a lot from Civil War. It's worth seeing. It's definitely a golden film. And it's got my pick. It, it definitely has my pick for a movie to watch. It's, it's a good movie to watch. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. It's just stupid things took me out of some of the scenes. Other than that, absolutely great. It was like a zombie movie without zombies. It basically depicts <clears throat> if you keep treating Americans the way you do, this is what's going to eventually happen. Yeah. It's from the uh, writers of Ex Machina, uh, Annihilation, and 28 Days Later. Annihilation. No. No. Ex Machina. Yeah. 28 Days Later. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking 28 weeks later. If it was 28 weeks later, I'd be like, no. 28 days later? Yes. Okay. So, Ex Machina, 28 days later. Annihilation, not so much. Not... Sorry, Natalie Portman. Man, bear, pig. I couldn't go with you. But, to each its own. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, thank you for joining me over the Memorial Day weekend with our list of picks of movies that we watched. Today we were talking about Civil War. You guys got to check out the trailer. We got to unpack the good, the bad, and the ugly. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, ladies and jelly spoons, thank you for stopping on by my channel. Uh, we look forward to some good endeavors. Um, and if there's nothing good on or coming out, we're going to dig back in the back, grab some DVDs from the good movies we watched and know from back in the day. Because I see a lot of channels that do movie reviews that aren't doing some of the great movies we've watched. And they need to be talked about. And here, I'm telling you, as long as I got breath in my lungs, we will talk about those movies. Because some movies need to be talked about. Some of them need to be run over in the driveway. And some movies need to be set on fire on your cooking grill. And there are some there are some hidden gems in this world that are not talked about. And I got plenty of them in my arsenal of movies. So we'll probably be taking taking a watch of some of them. There you go. So you can expect more coming from me, the Nightmare Creature, and maybe some surprises here in 24K Movies and Reviews. So until next time, until next movie, <laughs> stay glued to your stations. Watch something that gives you joy. And remember, movies, television, games, all these forms of media are about escapism. To leave your life and your problems behind for but a few moments, fleeting moments, to take the pressures off of you just enough so that you can go on through another day. At the very least, we are story-driven people and we love stories. Stories make our life go around. Some stories are good, some stories are down for maybe in another movie, in another town, maybe you're right side up, and I'll be upside down. But until next time, I'll see you guys later. I love you, and I love this. Take care of yourselves. Happy Memorial Day, people.